Howdy, I'm John Richman, and I'm the inventor and the manufacturer of the Sluice Goose Industries Gold Drop Vortex Spinner Pay Dirt and Gold Separating Processor. Today I'd like to show you the new version of the Gold Drop Miner. This is the latest version of the Gold Drop Miner. It operates on the same principle as the Vortex Spinner. The Gold Drop Miner, like the Vortex Spinner, operates off the physics of elutriation, which is basically a vertical flow of water coming up from this valve here into the trap, suspending the lighter material in the trap, while the denser material cannot fight that vertical flow and drops down into the jar. The paddles and the vortex spinner keep all of the dirt suspended and moving while the action of the incoming dirt then displaces the dirt in the trap and moves it up, goosing it into the tailings bucket. This is the vortex spinner motor in the funnel here. It's completely waterproof with vinyl sleeves over the motor to make it completely waterproof as it spins around. This is the water wash nozzle to use for washing the dirt down in the gold drop through the screen, which is a three millimeter screen. So anything that's three millimeter or less will wash down through the screen while the bigger material stays in the screen. And then basically you flip the screen, dump off the overburden onto the ground, and now you're ready to go again. The tailings are discharged through the discharge tube here and out into the tailings bucket, into the tailings drum. From there, as the tailings drum fills up, the water level then forces the water back to the pump drum through these siphon hoses, completing a complete circuit of water circulation. This is the 12 volt wash pump I use. Its intake is suspended in the pump drum and that's what powers the water hose to wash in the dirt. Everything operates on 12 volt and I created these bus bars on the battery to make all the connections of the battery clamps. In the pump drum, I have the pump suspended above the bottom, hanging on the hose. This is how I position the drum here, the ability to hang the hose suspended in the water, not on the bottom. And then also the intake for the wash hose is also suspended off the bottom. So they're not gonna inadvertently suck up any debris that collects on the bottom. I'm running a test on this gold drop miner. I purchased a bag of quickcrete all-purpose sand at Home Depot, and we're gonna process this bag through the gold drop miner. Test it, see what gold we extract from. So to begin, I'll wash in a little bit, a scoop, to be able to do the settings. I have the drop cell water set at 0.5 gallons per minute. That's the water that's flowing up into the trap through the drop cell. You can see there's some rocks that are coming down, but we actually want to allow more of that material to drop down. So this valve here controls the vertical flow 
in the drop tube. So I'll actually, I'll decrease it. I'm gonna decrease it down to, oh, by 0.4. And now you can see, it's more of the gravel coming down and dropping into the jar. And that's actually okay because that action is pulling gold into the jar along with the heavier gravel. And then you can see the material is just kind of swirling around in there, agitated by this vortex spinner. So this is what we're gonna run at. About 0.4 gallons vertical flow in the drop cell. To remove the jar, first off, we've got to increase the flow in the drop cell here. If you blow all of the overburden up into the trap, that way the column is empty, there is no dirt or gravel, so that you can close the valve without trapping anything in the gauge. And now, 
you can go ahead and unscrew the jar. So now to drain the trap, go ahead and open the gate valve and let it all drain into the pan. And when it's all drained out, open the valves in order to clean out any of the debris that accumulated inside. And now you can drop, shut off the drop cell water. And there you have it. Now we can see what gold is in the jar and then also what was in the trap. Now we'll see what gold might be in the jar here. Use the gold claw pan. Kind of refine it, get the overburden off here. Get it fluidized. Start pouring it off the back side. Go vertical and then now you're going to go ahead and wash everything back into the pan from the big riffles and now you're going to again fluidize and then when everything is level across the pan then you just very slowly work that mineral the big rocks across the riffles to expose the gold just to give you an idea of what was in there before I clean it up there you can see the gold in the small riffles there so light gold. Gotta be a little more careful washing it off here. There is the gold in the jar. So now we'll go ahead and check the trap. So I'll go ahead and put all this gold in the jar here. So I've reduced the overburden in the uh, trap down to my last little bit. Now I'm going to use my spin it off in order to remove the magnetite. the magnetite removed by the spin it off wonderful action that is doesn't pick up the gold now we'll do our last little cleanup here and see what gold was in the trap a little dirty I couldn't really see what was going on there let's see what I got and I cleaned it up
Oh yes. And a little more cleanup and it'll be in good shape, but there's the gold that was in the trap. So now I'll clean it up and see how much we got for a total. This is the total weight of the gold extracted out of that 50 pound bag of Quickrete all purpose sand purchased at Home Depot. We have a grand total of Point 0.1 grams. That's pretty cool. Let's take a close look at this gold. How tiny it is. Here, let me throw a dime in here for perspective. Some pretty tiny stuff. All extracted, processed through the gold drop miner. Thanks for watching, and thanks for being interested. www.sluicegooseindustries.com